Hello, people. It's not Tuesday. I'm going to do a Tuesday, but I want to get this done because I have some story times. And I spent the day with my wife-in-law. And in case you, none of you know what that means, since I made the name up, it is a lady that has been married to one of my ex-husbands. Their wife-in-laws. The ones that I get along with are wife-in-laws. The ones that I don't get along with are just skanks. Shelly happens to be a wife-in-law. And I'll tell you the story about number five. And this is out of context because I haven't talked about number four yet. But since I was with Shelly today, and she refreshed my memory about a lot of things, I'll go ahead and tell you about number five. And he is, was, and is a one Center, and I'm not going to mention the name of his club because you don't do that. But anyway, I met him at a guy named John Mark's house. It was a poker game going on. We kind of liked each other, but he was married. I didn't really pay any attention to him. And he said, Where are you going to be this weekend? I said, I'm going to be in Dallas at Peachtree Apartments on Buckner. And he said, well, I'm going to ride to Harley down there and give you a ride. I said, okay. I never dreamed I would see him. He showed up. He showed up. And he was married, so I really didn't think he'd ever leave his wife. But he did. He left her. And I didn't want to get married to him. I got a video of our wedding. It was a huge biker wedding, and I felt like I was a captive. I didn't like it. I knew I was fucking up, but we got married. And it was a fight. I think we were married five, maybe six years, and it was terrible. The only thing that wasn't terrible about it was his son, who I got to raise and still love to this day. And he was very good to my daughter, too. But anyway, where Shelly comes in the picture, and I posted pictures of Shelly on my channel, there was a back to jail party for a guy named Skipper. And my girlfriend, Kathy, at the time said, we need to go to this party. There's going to be a bunch of bikers there, blah, 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 blah. So we go over there and I had already divorced number five by this time. I was single. And the band that was playing, the lead singer was a guy named Ricky Kelly, which was Shelly's husband at the time. And my number six, who I hadn't met yet, was playing the drums. And they were had a band, and they were had a wet t-shirt contest, all the stuff that bikers do. And Dan, number six, I told Kathy, I said, I don't see any good-looking guys here. The only good-looking guy I see is that drummer. And he happened to walk up to me, and he said, if I still know you a year from now, I'm going to marry you. So that's how we got started. And we took off, me and Kathy. Kathy went with Skipper. I went with Dan. We went to the Red Roof Inn. We stayed gone all night. Everybody was looking for us because Skipper was married too. Dan wasn't married. He was up for grabs. But anyway, they spent the night looking for us. Well, that's how we got started. Well, Shelly, I met Shelly and Ricky that night, the girl that I spent the day with today. I met her and Ricky. And we started hanging out in the same groups. Because Ricky's band played at all these biker parties, all of them. So Shelly said, "How can, who are you married to? I said, I was married to CJ. She said, oh, my God, I hate him. How did you ever marry him? Blah, 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 blah. She hated him. Everybody hated him. So I never dreamed that they would ever, ever, ever get together, ever, in a million years. Well, me and CJ broke up. He got with a girl named Connie, and they would ride by my house on that Harley and sit out there at the salt mine and rub it in my face day after day. Well, they didn't last long, and then he got with a girl named Lorraine that I halfway got along with, halfway didn't. I can't remember how long he was with her. And then one day, and Shelly always worked at this bar called Doc's in Dallas. It's a kind of a biker bar. And she always hated him. She always hated CJ. She hated him. So we went to a party. I had a girlfriend from the salt mine who's now passed away from leukemia named Pat. 
And you got to act right around these biker bitches because they don't mind. They'll put you in your place real fast. So Pat was out there just dancing, flirting with everybody. She flirted with Shelly's husband, Ricky, the lead singer. Well, and they, and everybody kept watching her, and I kept nudging her because Shelly was sitting right there with us. We were sitting at the band table because Pat was supposed to be with this redheaded guy called Red. So anyway, Pat kept doing what she was doing. Well, that Ricky came over to the table to give Shelly a kiss, and she bit his bottom lip. I thought she was going to bite his bottom lip off because of the shit him and Pat had been doing, flirting. Pat still didn't get it. She was oblivious, having a ball. She didn't realize she was causing trouble. She was out on the floor, dirty dancing with every man that walked up to her. Well, finally, these two biker chip chicks come over, Rhonda and Blondie, and they said, you got to get your friend out of here, because if you don't, there's going to be trouble. So get her the fuck out of here now. So I said, Pat, we got to go. Come on. And I went up there and told Dan, number six, I said, we got to go. Pat's not acting right. I got to get her out of here. And he said, well, if you go, I'm going. I said, well, whatever. Then they won't have a drummer. Well, when Dan and I left, the other guitar player, Red, who she was supposed to be with, left too. So we left. So that left them with no band. So we left. Shelly's still hating CJ this whole time. Every time I was around her, she hated him. She wouldn't talk to him. Didn't want to talk about him or nothing. So it went on, and I knew him and Lorraine had broke up. And I always kept in touch with my stepson. I still do to this day. So one day, he's a long-haul trucker. He called me. He said, you won't believe who I just married. I said, no, please tell me who you married. He had married Shelly the girl I was with today. I couldn't believe it. I said, put her on the phone. There is no way she married you. She hated you. She got on the phone. She said, Ricky and me split up. Ricky went to Minnesota or somewhere and CJ come around and got her, said, oh, come on, get on the truck with me. And she got on the truck with him and they were married for, I don't know how long. They were married quite a while. And then he left her for this young chick that he's got now. He's got a real young chick now, and she's jealous of Shelly and both of us real bad. So Shelly and I were together today, and we always called each other wife-in-laws because I always liked her. I liked her before she got with him. I like her now, and we like to fuck around with that young chick, get her mad, because that's what women do, believe it or not. So I hung around with her today and talked about old memories. I just got not off the phone with Kevin. Told her all about Kevin, because I haven't seen her in a while. She lives out in Odessa, and I can't leave these dogs long enough to go visit her. So I love the day. I put a picture of her and me up. It was a wonderful, wonderful day, wonderful memories. And I was actually going to film us together so we could talk about number five together, but I didn't have a signal. And CJ, the marriage to him was ridiculous. It was hideous. I told my daughter where I was going, but neither one of us acted right. Never did, never will. But I got a good wife-in-law out of it. I got Shelly, that's for sure. That's the only one. I ne I used to cut, stay friends with Lorraine a little bit, but I don't ever know what happened to her. But anyway, what this really is about is the ungrateful pool stick bandit woman beater, SoFlo, is still running his mouth about me. And my poor informants... You know, they're really struggling to find stuff because I told them I don't want to hear nothing at all what the bottom feeders say. I'm done with the females. Not fooling with them. Don't want to hear what they say. Don't care what they say. Could care less. They're dead to me. I don't want to hear about it. The only one I listen to is Siwa, and I go to sleep with her. And Siwa, thank you so much for the credit on the clip. And then you said something else nice, but I can't remember what it was, but I still went to sleep. You still put me to sleep. So I am going to let you hear what this idiot says because I don't ever get on here and run my mouth without. They're pretty lame. He's getting very lame with his criticisms because I put the cash apps up. Everybody knows he didn't put a heart on them. I'm going to finish putting them up. He's still talking about my body parts. But in one of these, the most ridiculous, he says he has proof that I loved him. I want to see this for myself because I never even liked him, let alone loved him. He's an idiot. But I'm going to play him, 
and then Tuesday I can get back to the facts. Here he is, the great pull stick bandit himself. How can you say I'm an ungrateful guy? Because you are ungrateful. That's how I say it. You are ungrateful. And let me show you what this lovely. There's some person, person with a picture of me as an avatar, and I take that as being famous, and it says, Titty Time, Oldest and Baddest, nine ninety nine. so he's getting some money now, at least, off my name. That ought to make him a little happy, since he's not getting any more money. Guess who's getting my money now? Tony Pizza. And guess what? He's very grateful, and he puts a heart on every one of them. You guys could take a lesson from him. Instead of trying to chase him around and find him, you need to start being grateful for your good subs. Here's the great pool stick man again. Have you lost your fucking mind? <laughs> what the fuck? How can you say that to me, bro? I'm fucking grateful for this I say it to you because you are ungrateful, and I've already proved it. Have you lost your fucking I've already proved it. And if I have to post the rest of them, I will. He is in denial. And I know he listens to me. I know he does. Because he already heard that I gave pizza a cash app. He's flipping out over that. Don't worry about my money. Don't worry about my money, any of you people. I do with my money what I want to do with my money. It's nobody's business but mine. You would all learn a lesson by minding your own business about people's money. How can you say that to me, bro? I'm fucking great for this personified bitch! <laughs> hey, thank you, Teddy. God, it's totally awesome. What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you're laughing right now. <laughs> take the time to take, take. How can you say that to me, bro? I'm fucking great for this personified bitch! <laughs> He thinks it's a joke to be ungrateful. And my poor informants, this is all they could come up with, and this is really, really lame people, but I wanted to get him out of the way because he may say some better stuff later. Who knows? I don't know if this is the same one or not. I'm struggling your channel to the roof. <laughs> hey, report, report. Come on, report the channel. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Report the channel. Hey, bro, listen to me. Report. Your... I'm struggling your channel to the roof. Now, this Miss Mickey is Lauren. And isn't it strange that he never mentions Lauren? And neither does FBS now. I wouldn't be surprised if all three of them are buddies. All three of them. Because that Miss Mickey is absolutely Lauren, and she just gave him a $20 super chat. So who are you getting your money from? Pool stick? Did you decide to lay to sleep with the enemy? Looks like it to me. Looks like you and FBS are both sellouts. But you lost the big bucks. Fooling around with her. A beggar. Do I want to suck a dick? <laughs> Not yours. No, but listen. You know how many times they try to strike my channel? <laughs> Why well, here we go. Terry time. Hey, you going to suck his dick? See how he talks. See how this idiot talks and the things he's done to women and there's still people defending this creep when he's indefensible. He has no redeemable qualities whatsoever. He's not funny. He doesn't know how to figure things out. He's supposed to be doing a deep dive on me. I've gave him three of my last names, and he was huffing around with that Hauser name like he thought it was something. Get digging, buddy, because your deep dive is not doing anything. Okay. Pretty lame, people, but I got to go with what I got to work with. Now, these were just yesterday. Tony Pizza uh, is seen walking around with his little doggy. You know what I mean? And uh, 
Poor Leon, bro. Poor Leon, he likes to abuse his little dog. Hey, but that's all right. Right, Terry? Tell me it's okay for him to abuse his dog, bro. Come on. He calls himself a Republican. Tony Beach uh, is seen walking around with his little doggy. You know what I mean? And, uh... <laughs> for one thing, abusing a dog is not on the same level as beating a woman with a pool stick almost to death. It's not the same. He doesn't abuse the dog anymore when I'm in there. And it doesn't compare to the things you've done anyway. And it doesn't have anything to do with him being a Republican. In fact, if you knew anything about politics at all, I am not a Republican. I'm a Libertarian. And I was a Libertarian when you were shitting yellow. Because I voted for Bob Barr. I voted for Ron Paul. I voted for Russ Perot. Have you ever heard any of them? Look it up, you ignorant, stupid, woman-beaten, ungrateful. Because that's what you are. You're just mad because Tony Pizza's getting some cash apps now. And guess what he's going to get? My Howard Stern collection. Because I'll be dead. So when he gets it, I don't really care what happens to it, but I'd rather have him have it. At least he's grateful than you ungrateful know-it-all wife beaters. I've never heard of him beat no women. Never. He uses his mouth to hurt people. Not like you guys. You want to go legal. Come and roll up on me, you sissy pussy people. Come and roll up on me. I wish the hell you would. Any of you, I don't care if it's gun smoke, if you send a goddamn code and I want to be bikers, I don't care who it is. Roll up on me and run your stupid mouths. It's a Republican. It, wait, are you telling me that Republicans like to abuse dogs? It's a nice little hotel. But he's not on this side of the hotel. He's on the other side of the hotel. Like, by the way, people, this is this is Port Charlotte over here. We got the Midas touch over there. Right it's okay for him to abuse dogs. It, it's a Republican. It, wait, are you telling me that Republicans like to abuse dogs? What are you doing out chasing somebody around? You're not even in the right state. You're so pathetic. Why don't you go do something? Worthwhile, if that's possible. That's head from Texas. Oh my goodness. I'll take that. Not head from Texas. We got the one and only Her Highness Butterfly. And Butterfly. You love them bottom feeders, don't you? You know them bitches don't even have a job between them. So job. You suck up them bottom feeders so flow because they're your caliber. Since you're a bunch of mob wives, you need to be with the bottom feeders. You're exactly where you need to be with a bunch of know-nothing women. And many, I want my fucking purse back. I hope you had bad luck. I know you got fired. I don't know if you got another job. I doubt it. I know you're a pill head. And I know you took a purse under false pretenses. You... Snaky, slimy, backstabbing. You probably sold the purse because you're a broke bitch. You probably sold it. You probably don't even have it anymore. But you have to live with that shit, not me. And quit trying to tell everybody I forced it on you. You wanted that thing. Oh, I've never had a Louis Vuitton in my life. You were begging for it. You backstabbing, despicable, deplorable, stupid female, and you're a liberal on top of everything else. You're stupid. You didn't even know who the mayor of Chicago was. I had to send you a picture of your alien-looking mayor. You didn't even know who it was. You're an idiot, and you're so flow, and FBS is top informer. Good luck with that, fellas. She doesn't know anything. About politics, all she knows how to do is backstab people and take something that she didn't deserve and she shouldn't have. That's all many Deborah Silva knows how to do. And I'm sure she told you my name was Hauser, but she didn't tell you all my names. I don't know. Still got a few more to go. Now I have to find the one where he says he was in love with me. Where he could prove... 
that I was in love with him. Oh, I got to hear this. Same with Terry Time. Terry Time, you are so disappointing. I can't believe that you would do anything to support a man like that. Isn't that funny? I could say the same thing to you well, sure because you you're she's because she's you're supporting a man that beat a woman half to death. But you do like pimps, really. You like pimps. But so Flo was saying, "You love a convict." I didn't put my convict in jail. In fact, I asked him about that. I said, "How would that work if I rolled over on you? Would you still have anything to do with me?" He said no. So that tells you what kind of a guy Glenwood is. He's taking her for every dime he can get because the bitch put him in there. She wore a wire, and you're hanging with Soflo, so you two deserve each other. That's what I think. You deserve each other. It's off. And I don't doubt that she sent him cash apps. You don't doubt it? Well, guess what? You don't have to doubt it. I do send him cash apps. What are you going to do about it? Cry? Is FBS going to threaten to shut his show down if people don't send him money? What a beggar. What a beggar. That is the most begging thing. And it, the big wife beaters over there flopping and flipping around like a fish out of water, being an idiot that he is. Showing pictures and holding them up and shaking them. You can't even do a good imitation of somebody's voice. You're a joke. You are a joke. About that, uh, the meth head from Texas was uh, infatuated with me. Infatuated with him. <laughs> Weren't you? <laughs> no, I'm not infatuated I with you. you. That's all I got to say about you. Keep doing math. You might not last till you're, till you're 75. Don't worry about it. I'll still last longer than you do. I won't be in jail like you're headed for. Infatuated with him. You heard him say it. Weren't you? Infatuated with him. <laughs> Prove it. That's all I got to say about That's all you got to say. You just spent another whole half an hour saying something about me. I'm all you think about. Can't be, you can't take your summer pair. Tell me, tell me, you can't just got a pair of glasses. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Get this guy a pair of glasses at least, bro. I need some, I need some, listen, I need some $100 pair of glasses or something like that. Even Chinky, Chinky was going to, you can't be, you can't take your summer pair. Tell me, tell me, you can't just got a pair of glasses. Don't worry about my money. Don't worry about what I get, people. You're not getting none of it. In love with him. Prove it. He's got the proof. Prove it. No way, lady. Prove I was in love with you, you. Oh, can, you imagine, can you imagine the with, with the with the meth head from Texas who was in love with me? I got the proof. You don't think he said it? Right there, he's saying it. He's got the proof. I was in love with him. Prove it. No way, lady. Prove it. There's no way in hell. Bro. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? Prove it. Uh, with, with the with the meth head from Texas who was in love with me, I got the proof. When was that? When was I in love with you? Cause I don't think I even liked you. And your great oh, friend yeah. Minnie, you and FBS's big informant, she couldn't stand you either. We both quit watching you. In fact, I'm unsubscribed to you now. If it wasn't for my little informants, I wouldn't have nothing on you. Can you imagine banging that that that. That, that method from Texas. You need castor oil for that. 10 W30, 5 W30. And a little bit of transmission fluid too. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can you imagine banging that, 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 that method from Texas? You need castor oil for that, man. So he talks about women. 5 W30. And a little bit of transmission fluid too. Oh my God. Keep it up, SoFlo. You're digging, you're giving me content and you're making yourself look as idiotic as you are. Prove that I was infatuated and in love with you. Prove it. God. <laughs> Nasty lady. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my God. Let me see. Greg, you're gonna be busy later. Uh Sarma told me she was deep activity set up with you. My God. <laughs> Nasty. 
nasty lady. And you're sitting up there with a bee and a bee costume. You don't even know what she looks like. Nobody does because she won't stand up. You need to keep my name out of your mouth because I am going to post the rest of the cash app and show people just how ungrateful you are. And you said you had proof that I was infatuated with you, that I was in love with you. Prove it. Give the money to the animal shelter. Do that like you said you would. Do that. Hmm? Are you capable of doing anything you say? Are you capable of doing anything but violence against people and posting kids and families and wives? I have never mentioned a child or a family member. Never. I take it directly to the person that comes out of their mouth. Your mouth. Your mouth. Now. Since I got that over with, unless I get some new stuff, that's all I've got on him. Same basic crap. But as far as number five went, the sweetest thing he ever did, and this is probably why I fell in love with him. My mother died while I was dating this guy. And I was real upset, and I didn't really have time to talk to anybody, but I... I told him something about I would, I try to always make it. It's 1,400 miles from my driveway to my brother's driveway. So I try to get to, on the other side of Cincinnati and get kind of into Columbus. And the case, I know you people don't know your geography, but let me give you a little heads up. Columbus, Ohio is halfway. Columbus, Ohio is 900 miles from Texas. So if I get to Columbus, I can make it into my brother's the next day in the afternoon. So I had told this dude, CJ, I said, I'm going to be staying in a day's end. Well, he called every day's end in Bowling Green, Kentucky to try to find me till he found me. Now that is some dedication. Don't be surprised by them bikers. They can be romantic when they want to be. And I wish I could play our wedding tape. I took you by the place. Now, I've skipped over number four, but I'll get back to him my next story time. Because I was with Shelly today, it made me think of number five. It made me focus on him. I still talk to him to this day. His new wife is terribly, terribly jealous of me. In fact, I talk to all my husbands, but number one. Number one, I don't talk to. He used to talk to one of my friends, but she passed away, so I have no idea what number one's doing. I know he's still out in Santa Barbara, California, Eucalyptus Avenue. I've given you hints and hints and hints, and you haven't done a deep dive, and I was never infatuated with the woman beaten, ungrateful, so flow, never. I never even liked him that much. I told FBS way before I left that I was going to leave because of him. And several people have left because of him. And I don't know what in the world. I know him and MB and Sovlo are all like this now. Tight. So, I don't know who your enemies are going to be. I guess maybe pizza. And me. And I'm ready for you. Because I'm done with the women. I'm done with them. And this episode is brought to you by And of course, I have to put my Trump hat on. And I was a libertarian, so flow, not a Republican. Look it up. Look it up, because you obviously don't know a thing about politics. And you really don't know much about prison compared to what my man's telling me. Trump. 2024. And if any of you people get triggered, any of you females, or you have a race card, or you want to come in here and whine about your sicknesses and stuff, don't do it. This is not the room for you. I don't want to hear it. Nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to hear whining and crying. You're big and bad. One day you're going to do this and do that. And the next day you're somewhere crying about it. I don't want to hear that. And somebody in one of my comments said that I seem more gangster than all the mob wives. I think I am too. Because come on and grow up to my house. Big shots. 
You don't even have to look it up. It's Grand Saline, Texas, 6364, FM17. Pull up! Pull up and knock on my damn door. You fucking jokes. Every one of you, you're a bunch of mob wives. You act more like women than the women do. Next thing you'll be bawling and squalling, you beg for money. I'm gonna shut this down if I don't get some money and I've got a heart fibrillator and all this stuff. Nobody cares about that shit. I am perfectly fine. I'm 72. I have done methamphetamine since 69 and I'm in better shape than any of you. So go whine somewhere else. Hillbillies. Redneck. Cowboys. Trump. 2024. Jerky. Anybody but a bunch of wannabe mob people. Nobody knows who John Gotti is or the Gottis or anything else or any of the rest of them. When my Kevin gets out, he was actually in the prison when Whitey Bulger got married and he had his picture taken with the two guys. He is going to have a prison channel that is going to blow up people. Blow up. Because he knows some real people know some real stories, and he's going to lay it on the line, and I'm ready to get out of this stuff and let him take over doing it, because I'm sick of it. Anyway, have a great Sunday, and Tuesday with Terry time will be a food review, unless that fool says some outrageous stuff tomorrow. What you might do, I don't know, but I don't think I'm going to mess my Tuesdays up with that. I'll talk about number four on Tuesday and do a food review. Talked about number five today. I didn't tell you everything. There was a bunch more stuff to tell you. Like the time I got in a fight with him going down the road in a car and I kicked all the glass out of the speedometer and he threw me out of the car and didn't come back and get me. Stuff like that. And all you little women crying about your little essays. Oh, if you bring it up, it's going to make me relive it. Well, relive it then. Because I've got a hundred of them, and I'm going to talk about them. I'm grateful that I lived through them. I don't sit there and ponder and whine about the shit that happened to me. It happened. I lived through it. I'm a survivor, and I don't hump up and cry every time somebody mentions an essay. Oh, no, it's giving me flashbacks. You act like you've been in Vietnam or something. Post-traumatic stress. Really? You people ain't even had stress, let alone post-traumatic stress. Anyway, love you. Ciao.